All the way back in 2010, before anybody and everybody had a podcast, Wholesaler Masterminds Radio was on the air. Now, it's in a whole different feed at iTunes, but there are some shows in there I want you to hear. Now, rest assured, we've done our best to clean them up because the originals sounded a lot like AM radio, but they are no less important because there's great speakers and trainers and authors and thought leaders. And that's why in this feed at the new Wholesaler Masterminds Radio Show, we're going to start dropping in our archived series. And you'll see that designated in the feed. So please enjoy. Welcome to the only podcast on the planet dedicated to exploring the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesalers and their leaders. This is the new Wholesaler Masterminds Radio Show. I'm your host, the founder of Wholesaler Masterminds, Rob Shore. Wholesalers, welcome to another edition of Wholesaler Masterminds Radio. You know, by now, I've to iTunes and been able to grab the iTunes feed so you don't have to go out necessarily that we want you to go to wholesalermasterminds.com to find the show. You can get it directly to your iPhone or other device that would allow you to take us on the road. But when you do go out to iTunes, would you, would you stop by and give us a five-star rating, please? We would certainly appreciate that. About 12 years ago, I met my guest. Uh, we had hired him as a speaker at my old firm. And, and the message that, that he delivered uh, was uh, memorable, and you know how much a fan of memorable we are, and, and was certainly impactful. Uh, fast forward 12 years, I'm talking to a coaching client just yesterday, and when we were talking about a concept, he goes, you mean QBQ? I said, question behind the question. He said, yes, as a matter of fact, and it reminded me that John Miller would be a terrific guest for Wholesaler Masterminds Radio. If you're not familiar with John Miller, he wrote the book, QBQ, The Question Behind the Question. And as a matter of fact, based upon the roaring success over the years of QBQ, over a million books sold, he's now coming out with Parenting the QBQ Way, which will be out shortly. He is an expert on personal accountability, and that's why I wanted him to come on to Wholesaler Masterminds Radio and talk to our audience. John Miller, welcome to Wholesaler Masterminds Radio. Thanks, Rob. Glad to be here. So, you know, anytime anybody labels any of us an expert, uh, if we have a shred of humility in our body, we kind of say, well, gosh darn it, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what, accountability expert, explain that, please. What does that mean? Well, now that you've set it up with the uh, shred of humil humility comment, I would say that uh, the reason I'm an expert on personal accountability is because I so badly need it. <laughs> Somebody... <laughs> You know, people ask me, why'd you write QBQ? And I always say the same thing, because I needed it. But but you came upon it. I came upon it. Let me yeah. tell you how I came upon it. Please. I was selling leadership, sales management, and selling skills training for a decade and calling on executives. Essentially, you know, I was a wholesaler. I was out there repping every day for a training company. And I would set up training classes and bring in leadership material, and I would facilitate it, and I would listen. And I started to hear a pattern. People were asking what I think are very dangerous questions. Why do we have to go through all this change? When is someone going to train me? Why isn't our pricing competitive? When are we going to get better products? And I sat there and I thought, there's got to be a better question here. And one day it just came to me, the question behind the question, the QBQ. I actually went out and taught it the first time, Rob, as the question behind the question, and somebody labeled it. It was actually in the insurance business in Des Moines, Iowa, where somebody labeled it, let's call it QBQ. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea, you know. So we went off and started creating all our products and writing books on QBQ, the question behind the question. And we started helping people turn those lousy questions around. So instead of asking, when am I going to get better products, let's ask, what can I do to achieve the goal with the resources I already have? Instead of asking, why do we have to go through all this change, let's ask, how can I adapt to the changing industry, the changing world? Instead of asking, who made the mistake, Let's ask, what can I do to help solve the problem? And those latter questions, those better questions, we call them the question behind the question, and they really do take me to a higher level in life, and we call it personal accountability. And when I, when I live that life, that, that level of personal accountability, Rob, really everything is better. Let, 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 the, let the cynic in me come out for a second, because I'm sure that after your almost 20 years of speaking to audiences around the world, and, and just... The, 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 the human nature, uh, the observer of human nature that you must be to, to glean your content, 
the cynic in me might say, well, you know, John, that's a really nice attitude to have, but if my fixed income fund pays quarterly and the competitors pays monthly, that just frankly isn't going to sell as much. How is having personal accountability going to help me? Well, it always comes down to choice, Rob. If I was talking to that person face to face, I'd say, well, what's the what's what's the choice? What's the option? Well, the option is to quit and go work at a retail store selling clothing. The option is to go dig ditches. The option is to go get an engineering degree and do something in that field. Or you could stay right here and make a difference. What do you feel is the right choice? Oh, I want to stay in this industry. Great. So if you're going to stay in this industry, do you want to be a whiner, a bemoaner, a complainer, or a person who takes on challenges, achieves goals, and does it through personal accountability? And, of course, everybody's going to say, well, I want to be that, that latter person. Well, great then you can only do that by making what we call better choices in the moment. When I ask, when is someone going to train me? Why don't we get better products? I am making a really bad choice right there. I'm choosing to go to victim thinking, procrastination, and blame. But if I pause and say, well, I am frustrated that our product doesn't do what the competitor's product does, but I've chosen to represent this line. I've chosen to work here. What can I do to move forward today? What can I do to be more creative as a salesperson? How can I add more value to the life of my client and my client's clients? So it's all about the way I think, and that's what QBQ does. It helps me think better by making better choices in the moment so I can stay out of three traps. Once again, victim thinking, procrastination, and blame. Those are the traps that bring us down. So so do you have any recommendations? Because as I, as I hear you speak this, as I reminisce about hearing you speak more than once, do you have any suggestions about how we catch ourselves before before we we, we may go into it with the best of intentions, right? We, I heard John's message. I believe in QBQ, and I know that my fund is underperformed. I wish they'd fix performance. So how, how, how do I edit myself? How do I catch myself from falling? Well, the word editing is a, is a good one. QBQ actually has a methodology behind it. We don't need to give people motivation. I'm not a motivational speaker. I actually teach an idea that changes the way I think, and if I can change the way I think, then I can change everything else in my life. And the guidelines look like this. A QBQ begins with what or how, contains the word I, and focuses on action. So let me explain. Instead of asking when will they, the client, return my call, the when question takes me to procrastination, which, by the way, is the friend of failure. Any wholesaler that wants, wants to get out of bed in the morning and fail that day, all they got to do is start asking when will others handle this, when will somebody return my call, when will I get the information I need? When will we get better products? All these when questions take me to procrastination. If I take that when question and say, okay, I don't want to ask that. I want to ask what can I do to make a difference? Then I've now I built a question that begins with what or how, contains an I, because I can only change me. We could spend a whole interview on that, and it focuses on action. And so it is the same with why and who questions. Why is this happening to me? Why don't we get better products? Well, that's victim thinking. Now I'm in a powerless state where I serve nobody, not even myself. And who questions? Who's doing this to me? Who who created this mess? Who dropped the ball? Who made the mistake? All those questions take me to blame, and blame serves no one, because when we seek culprits, we don't solve problems. So to sum that little segment up, when we get rid of the who and the why and the when questions, which take me to blame, victim thinking, and procrastination, and ask questions that begin with what or how, contain the word I, and focus on action, then I can move forward, because now I'm practicing ownership, and personal accountability. You know, John, you, you were telling me uh, about bringing this concept from the the, the, the corporate realm, from from the business realm, uh, to the to the to the house, to the home. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I want to learn about that because so many of our listeners have children, and so many of our listeners have young families. Tell, tell me about how you're bringing this notion of, of personal accountability in, in, into the house, into the home. Well, here's what's happened over the years, Rob. A couple of things that are important for the listener. My wife and I have been married 32 years, and we have seven kids, ages 29 down to 13. The, the last three, the lowest age-wise, those three are all adopted. Uh, they're full-blood sisters. We adopted them in 2000. So we have four uh, kids that came to us the natural way. We have three adopted children. And we thought we were pretty good parents all along, to be honest with you. There's some humility for you. 
But what was interesting is when we brought the adopted girls in and they came from a tough situation, we actually needed to say, okay, what can I do to be a better parent? How can I be a better dad? Because what worked with the original four maybe didn't always work with the new three. So it's fascinating to look back on it because adoptions create stress. And we were tempted to ask, you know, why is this happening to us? Whose idea was this anyway? Carol, was this your idea to adopt? You know, all these bad questions. And one day we just said, no, let's get back to our roots of accountability. And we started asking those good questions like, what can I do to be a better parent? How can I let go of what I can't control? Uh, what can I do to help uh, these girls learn? Because they can learn. They do learn. They're beautiful women now. And, and how can I... How can I work on me as a, as a dad? So that message helped us so much. We thought, you know what, we need to put this accountability stuff that we've been talking about a long time into a book. And it's an e-book, so it's for your Kindle, your Nook, your iPad, your smartphone, your computer. It's called Parenting the QBQ Way, and it really helps parents look in the mirror. And here's what's fun, Rob, and you'll appreciate this because you saw me speak years ago. We sent out an email about the new parenting book recently, let's say to a 1,000 people. And what's so funny is about... About 50 parents responded and said, oh, thank you. Finally, a book that will help me hold my kids accountable. <laughs> close. Classic. Darn close. Classic response. <laughs> Everybody's out there saying, oh, I'm frustrated with my 13-year-old. How do I make him be accountable? And, and I think it's just going to be fun when that book slides into their Kindle or their Nook and they start reading it and they go, ouch, this book is for me. Yeah, that's it's gonna... for mom. It's for dad. That's going to be a tricky wake-up call, isn't it? <laughs> well, the same thing happens when I speak live. You know, about 25 minutes into the into the, the speaking engagement, I'll say, who have you been picturing that needs accountability? And they're always picturing somebody next to them or their grown son or their spouse who's not at that meeting. And, and that's really the key to QBQ, Rob, and for the success of a wholesaler. I can't change the world, but I can sure change me. I can change the way I think. I can change the way I emote. I can change the way I behave. And that's what QBQ says to me. I can only change me. So I'm done trying to fix my boss, my coach, my clients, my colleagues. I'm going to work on me today. What can I do to be a more effective wholesaler? How can I add more value? And, of course, that works at home. What can I do to be a better parent? John, if people want to find out more about you, rumor has it they can find it at QBQ.com. Did I get that right? It's so easy, Rob, QBQ.com, and they can learn more than they wanted to know. We will also make sure that we hook up some links on the website. Go to Wholesaler Masterminds, click on WMM Radio, and you'll find this interview along with all the links that you need to learn more about John Miller and get some of his insight via some of his written word. John Miller, thank you for joining us at Wholesaler Mastermind Radio. Rob, it was great. Thank you for having me on. Wholesalers, we'll talk to you next time on Wholesaler Masterminds Radio. It was a heated debate. On one side of the argument was the national sales manager who put his foot down and said, no, we will not allow schedulers to do the work wholesalers should be doing. On the other side of the argument was the long-tenured successful wholesaler who argued that having a scheduler was a huge efficiency and productivity gain for her business. So, who was right? Well, they both were. At Wholesaler Mastermind Schedulers, we believe that the first contact to schedule a meeting with a prospective advisor or COI should most effectively come from you, as your voice should be the first that they hear. We also believe that for your existing advisor clients, we can save you a ton of time and make you much more effective by letting us do the scheduling. To learn more about Wholesaler Mastermind Schedulers, visit us at wmmschedulers.com.